back today, and we are going to uh, basically define the formalism for how we're going to draw our burger circuit. Um, so in this class, this is very, very important. Um, we are going to use the SFRH uh, convention. So when we're dealing with our burger circuit here. So SF means start to finish, and we're going to use the right hand convention in order to define our burger's vector. You might see different notation um, uh, elsewhere in literature, but this is what we're going to utilize in this class. So start to finish vector, just like we've done previously, and then our right-hand notation. So in order to define our Burgers vector, we have to kind of draw this Burger circuit. So we need to first choose, so our first step, a choose a positive sense of our unit tangent vector, i.e., write this down a little bit more simply, we need to define what is our tangent vector, t. So our tangent vector, again, is going to be uh, tangential, you know, parallel to, you know, tangential to our dislocation line. So we're going to define that tangent vector first. Then we are going to make a two, a complete, right? Uh, actually, we're also, we're also going to define, define T. We're going to pick a start. Three, we are going to, you know, draw a right hand circuit. So again, you can see here, define a start point S, draw the right hand circuit, and then define a finish point. Start S, define finish point F after you've drawn the circuit. And then you're going to see that five, the circuit should be closed if we have a perfect crystal. So if we have a perfect crystal, so if no dislocation, we should find that our start and finish are the same point. But if we have a dislocation, uh, basically you can see here, so uh, we only have uh, basically closed, um, actually, if we have a dislocation, the start and finish are not at the same point. So we're going to close this. That start to finish vector will connect. That Burger's vector is the vector which connects my start and finish points. So that's kind of the key idea here. Now, a couple other quick points about uh, Burger's vectors, and then we'll get into an example. And I think it'll be very helpful to kind of uh, kind of see this notation going into play. Um, Burger's vector is going to be conserved for any given dislocation, so there's one constant Burgers vector. So even if you define your tangent, this basically means if I define my tangent differently, so regardless of regardless of T choice, the Burgers vector is conserved. I have one Burgers vector. So the Burgers vector is going to be conserved. Dislocation can't end inside of a crystal. Um, and here's kind of a really, really critical point. So if we have a pure edge location, B is going to be perpendicular to T everywhere along there. So B, if it's pure edge, B is perpendicular to T. If it's pure screw, it's going to be either parallel or anti-parallel to T everywhere. So if it's right-handed screw, it is or actually it, we're going to be parallel. If we're left-hand screw, it's going to be anti-parallel. If your dislocation is neither pure edge or pure screw, it will be mixed, and there'll be some component that's parallel to T or anti-parallel to T, and some that will be perpendicular. So that'll be an edge and a screw component. And again, this is kind of the key idea here. If you reverse T, it also reverses the sense of B. But again, B will still be perpendicular. But again, you'll reverse that, but uh, again, your Burgers vector is conserved. So regardless of whether you reverse T, you'll also get, you'll, you'll still find the edge or screw dislocation. So that is kind of the key concept here. So next time we're going to do some videos on how to identify examples of, uh, of an edge and screw dislocation. And then, yeah, we'll be kind of almost basically done with lecture uh, three. So moving on to diffusion. So I'll see you in the next video. We'll do some fun example problems. All right. See you. Bye.